Welcome to the Reading Plans Lecture as part of the Fundamentals of Construction Management course. Here are some quick instructions for this video module. Use the buttons at the bottom of the video to navigate the module, pause it, go back, or control volume. You will often take an assessment after each video. For all assessments, please go to the Quiz tab in Canvas. For any questions about this content, please consult with the instructor at apmccoy at vt.edu or use the discussion section of the Canvas website. And here are the learning objectives of the Reading Plans lecture. By the end of this module, a learner should be able to define orthographic projection and drawing types, identify common orthographic projection drawing types, define the phases of the architectural drawing process and the parts of a building, identify specific sections of architectural drawings, and identify types of notations on architectural drawings. Previously in the Drafting and Architectural Techniques lecture, we discussed the concept of orthographic projection. Here in this slide, I'm trying to show you a little bit better of an example of how architects traditionally would work with a blank piece of paper and start creating the floor plan and the different drawings out of that blank piece of paper. In this case, orthographic projection is the drawing's orientation perpendicular to the edge of the paper. That's really the basic definition of it. And you can see, based on the way that architects typically have drawn, uh, using the, um, the ruler coming across the drawing plane and then the actual flat drawing plane, how that would work. If we look at the next slide, we'll see that orthographic projection drawings are defined in two ways. We discussed this in the previous lecture as well. Multi-view drawing, uh, where the drawing of one static side or view of the building appears. Uh, Multi-view projections are two-dimensional. They include drawings like plans or elevations or sections. And to the right you can see an example of some of these different types of multi-view drawings. Single view drawings will simultaneously communicate more than one side of an object. It's a three-dimensional drawing uh, in the same view. Even though these uh, definition or the, the name for these drawings seem a little bit backwards, uh, this is the way we consider them in terms of architectural drawings and what we've been talking about in the previous lecture and what we're going to expand on today. Single view drawings, they are an accurate representation of the three-dimensional object. Um, on a two-dimensional plane, on two-dimensional paper, but increasingly we are uh, working in the industry with building information modeling which provides the same uh, three-dimensional object but in a modeling, in a, um, a computer graphic modeling program so that we can uh, walk in and out of the building, we can look at increasing levels of detail in the materials and the um, uh, the structure and the different parts of the building that we're working with. In this slide the goal is to demonstrate the process of a real object and how drawings and the different types of drawings can represent that real object. In the top left we have an apple as it would appear out in the real world uh, hanging off of a tree. Um, but if you go to the right of that apple I'm suggesting that we have different ways of drawing the apple, representing it in graphic form uh, with different types of drawings and even slicing it up and looking at it with notations and, and uh, different parts to the apple. So what that would become basically in the terms of what we've been talking about with orthographic projection, on the bottom row we see different types of orthographic projection. All the way to the left we have an apple elevation. We see it to scale two-dimensionally looking at the front of it. In, this, in the middle we have a section where we actually slice through the apple. We start to see what's in the middle of the apple similar to the way we would slice through a building and show it two-dimensionally on the paper. And then on the bottom right we start to see some details and notations and that would be uh, closer to what we would call a single view drawing where we have some perspective to it we start getting uh, layering and we start being able to see multiple sides of the uh, apple but um, on a two-dimensional plane. And here is the orthographic projection concept similar to what 
I just showed with the apple, but actually taking what looks like a box with a house in it and breaking that box apart so that we can show all of the different multi-view, two-dimensional plane drawings that would help us see the house and uh, have an accurate representation on paper that we can build. You have rear elevations, front elevations, you might have top elevations and side elevations. Uh, typically, if we show a floor plan, that is considered a section, but it's actually a section of cutting through the middle of the building and looking down onto the floor plan. Uh, typically, floor plans are considered to be sections of the building three feet above the floor level. So we see everything that is happening on the floor three feet below where the drawing plane is. Same with sections coming through the side of the building. Uh, we'll cut through the side of the building and we'll see details based on where that section is taken uh, and drawn from. And those section lines will be delineated on the drawings. Keep in mind when thinking about orthographic projection that typically that we don't have a use for all six views of the object, the house, the building. Uh, so if there are certain views omitted, meaning if an elevation is not shown, well, it's probably because there is a corresponding one that is very similar and uh, that can be used uh, for all the information that you need. So for example, you might not have uh, an east and west elevation for every building, um, especially at homes. Uh, typically, in the relationship of the views, you only have two dimensions that are shown. You see the height and the width on the page, uh, especially with the um, multi-view drawings. And sometimes we have views that are hidden uh, from the drawings. So if we're looking, for example, at a uh, floor plan, there might be objects that are above the area that we cut through the floor plan so that we can show it. And before I mentioned that we would cut through the building at uh, three feet above the floor and then draw everything below us, and that's what a floor plan uh, consists of. In this case, on this drawing, what you see here is uh, you see some equipment that is being dotted in the middle of the page, and that is showing um, a hidden view of an item above the floor plan. And it's important because typically equipment needs to be aligned well with uh, parts of the floor plan, say in a laboratory environment uh, or some other environment where it's important to have that equipment aligned well. Uh, we use a dashed line to show these uh, hidden views in the equipment uh, that you might have above. Other times you might see a dash line in regard to an opening in the floor plan above the space, things like that. Uh, in a kitchen drawing for a, a house, you'll often see dotted lines for cabinets above the level at which the floor plan is drawn. So I've hinted at this before, but here I'm actually going to define what a floor plan is. It's very, it is a view projected to a horizontal plane and observed from the top. And sometimes, uh, actually, we see floor plans or uh, raised uh, ceiling plans. Uh, so we'll actually see the, the view from the bottom of the ceiling above. Um, but in this case, a typical floor plan is observed from the top. Uh, it's actually a horizontal section at about three feet or four feet above the floor level. It usually contains a grid system off of which cri critical dimensions are pulled. So for example, the columns of a building will be placed into a grid typically, and then you'll see the dimensions are pulled off of that grid because that grid signifies the main structure of the building. And you can see important items that rely on that structure, and that's why we pull dimensions off of that structure. Um, the floor plan will be split often along those grid lines. Uh, the floor plan is typically the best view for locating items within the building. We see floor plans typically as an individual floor by floor basis. We'll have floor plan for floor one, floor plan for floor two, floor three, for example. Often we'll have a plan for the foundation. We'll have a framing plan. I mentioned this before, but the reflected ceiling plan, seeing the ceiling from below uh, and the the ceiling above us will draw it as a floor plan, but imagining it uh, from below. Site plans and site improvement plans uh, are often 
uh, something that you'll see in the plan format. Landscaping, demolition, where in de demolition we'll see items that need to be removed from the existing plans before we can start new construction. Roof plans, fire protection plans, interior mechanical plans. These are just some of them. There are other ones too, but these are some of the typical ones you might see. Here's an example of a typical view for a site plan. In this case, with the blue arrow, we're identifying the location of the building and other major features of the site. The um, parking, uh, all of the layout of the rest of the site around the building, major utilities that are coming to and from the building. Keep in mind, though, this is not a civil drawing. Civil drawings and civil plans will have much more detail about what's going into the ground and a lot of the work uh, with the site. Uh, in this case, we're just really citing the building in location with regard to the rest of the site uh, and the kind of um, uh, boundaries of the site as well. This is a typical view for a floor plan. Uh, I mentioned before that it's a horizontal section you're know, cutting horizontally through the building and looking down as uh, through the walls, but also what's in the building. So you see along the edge of, in this case, this is a, a duplex house plan. You see a thickness to the walls because we're cutting through them and you can start to see some of the details of the windows and the pieces that we're cutting through. But you also see, in this case, uh, the bathroom layouts, the floor plan layouts with the rooms and the closets. You see the stairs, things like that. You start to get some critical dimensions in this case, and you're starting to see a little bit of lighting overlaid on top of the plans. They're dotted, which suggests that they're hidden, uh, but they're above the floor plan itself. Here's an example of a typical view for a framing plan, the same duplex, uh, but other information is being portrayed here. This is looking at the framing of the first floor above the CMU block and that's what is uh, shown along the exterior that kind of uh, hatching that you see the gray that's where the CMU block would be along the exterior and then we have dotted lines for the um, joists that will be making up the structure of the floor for this duplex along the very bottom it's very difficult to see but uh, we see the critical dimensions uh, regarding the structure. This is the type of information that you're going to need for uh, building to code to make sure that um, the uh, structure is at the right interval and the right spacing in terms of dimensions. Sometimes you see dotted lines that are doubled up. That's a case where you'll have framing joists that are actually sistered or paired together and combined together uh, and that's sometimes required for the structure, but it also might be uh, simply where you have uh, sheathing or some other structure on top of it joining. Now I'm going to introduce uh, typical drawings that are called elevations. Uh, these are views projected to vertical planes. So if we have the two-dimensional plane of the uh, drawing surface, elevations typically are dealing with vertical elements. Uh, they call out typically the critical vertical dimensions. They talk about roof pitch sometimes from the side. Roof pitch meaning the slope of the roof. Uh, they are the best view for locating items outside of the building. Often you'll see grade lines along the side of the building where uh, the, the building has the exterior grade or the ground kind of uh, that's expected to be filled up to a certain line. Sometimes you'll see, see interior elevations uh, we do that uh, typically when we combine it with a section and information on the section, but interior elevations are good for tile patterns in the kitchen or the bathroom, for example. And then uh, the most typical type of elevation is from the exterior. So we'll see a front, a side, or a rear, uh, and what we call cardinal compass points. Cardinal compass points refer to no uh, north, east, west, and south, and we'll have a north elevation, a south elevation, for example. The next slide is an example of an exterior elevation. You see along the left side of the drawing all the different notes uh, uh, specifying what types of materials or the slope that's involved. On the right side you see critical dimensions in terms of elevations um, and expectations as to the height of the building, 
uh, the different floor sections and you still see some notes uh, along the bottom of the drawing as well that pertain to the doors or uh, the different quality of items, things like that. When it comes to typical drawings that are called sections, uh, in, in those drawings we're cutting through the building and we're looking in one direction in that building. And you'll see uh, along the floor plan a section line that tells you not only where the section is taking place, what part of the building they're cutting through, but also the direction in which they're looking. Uh, it's the best view for locating items between the floors of the building, for example stairs and how they work. Uh, it indicates major structural features. Typically you can see the joists or the major steel beams in the section that are uh, the structural features of the building. Typically you think of it as an index and the more detailed sections you have, the more you're going to see labeled information and notes that index and, and describe all the different parts of the construction. You have two types of sections, typically a cross section. It's the short dimension of the building and a cut through that short dimension. The other type of section is a longitudinal section. It's the long dimension of the building and sometimes it's very difficult to fit a longitudinal section on a page. In the next slide I'm showing you an example of a longitudinal section that does fit on a page and you can see the level of detail and the level of information along the right side of the page you see the different elevation marks that tell you the height of the building and the different pieces of structure and where they need to be uh, within those elevations. Uh, you're seeing also materials in a lot of cases. Um, you're seeing how it cuts into the ground and a lot of the foundation and the structure along the bottom and the basement, the part that's uh, below the surface. Um, and then along the left side you're seeing total dimensions of the building as well so you can get a sense of how tall, how big is this building? That might be something that really helps you with looking at the construction process and uh, how you're going to be able to, to bring in parts of the building or even work along surfaces of the building. Sometimes they'll show you the human scale. You see human uh, figures in this drawing to kind of show you how the human scale stacks up uh, to the section and give you some, some idea of, of you know, perspective of how that works. And then in the top left you see some notes that might be typical to these drawings. In the next four slides I'm going to show you uh, wall sections and different levels of details. So different types of wall sections and levels of details. Uh, wall sections are views projected within the wall and uh, from the bottom of the footing to the top of the roof often. Uh, sometimes we'll have a detailed wall section which really focuses in on one area and it's not all the way from the um, foundation to the to the roof. Um, I'll show you examples of all these in the coming slides. Uh, often we have portions that are deleted with line breaks so you'll see these uh, straight lines with a, a, a little small squiggle in the middle and that's meant to tell you that we can't show the entire wall section it's just too large for the page so we've omitted certain parts uh, in the middle of the wall, for example, that are not as important or are typical to the drawing. Typically, wall sections are at a smaller scale. So we have a typical scale like one and a half inch equals one foot or one inch equals one foot. Um, and even sometimes three inches equals one foot so that we can get more and more detail and it becomes closer and closer to the reality of what we're building so that we can really get in and understand how it needs to be built. Uh, often though architects will not go to that level of detail and the contractor needs to figure out this information on site. So this is the type of information that as a contractor it's good to be able to sketch out and draw and understand to how to work with people so that in the field you can figure out issues and draw at a scale that is representative of what you're trying to do quickly so you can talk about it and, and work out the detail together. Uh, the number of details uh, varies with the complexity of the construction um, but you often will use details to kind of direct the work that's happening. So you'll tell for example uh, the mason to put wall ties at 24 inches on center in that wall section. In the next slide even though it's turned on its side you get an idea of a wall section from the foundation all the way up to the roof. You see the roof slope all the way at the left 
uh, 12 and 12 pitch. Um, and then you see all the different framing materials, even, you know, each one of the, the headers for the walls, the, um, uh, the, the different so, uh, double top plates and the, the sill plate, things like that, the structure for the flooring. If we go to the next slide, then this is taking that previous drawing and focusing in on one little area, blowing it up so it's a little bit better detail. You can see how the soffit of the house is built, where the gutter connection happens, things like that. So you're getting into a lot of detail. You even see the, the sashes on the windows in this case. And if we go to the next slide, now we're really getting into a detail, in this case, of the top of a roof soffit, where you can see all the different plates and the screws that are happening, the details on the um, architectural mullions and, and woodwork, things like that, that typically you're going to need to know how to price um, and you're going to want to know all this information so you can see what's expected of you when you um, put a bid for the for the contract on you know on this building or the home in this case when it comes to schedules typically we're talking about a tabular view or a table of repetitive items we talked about this a little bit before but um, we're getting into some details now. I showed an example before in the previous lecture as well, um, but typically schedules deal with doors and a table of doors. They deal with windows. They deal with finishes, fixtures sometimes, electrical, plumbing fixtures, and then often we're dealing with equipment. In the next slide, you see typical views and of a finished schedule. Um, so, in this case, we have the room number, the name of the room or the area, what the finish for the floor will be. Sometimes it's carpet, sometimes it's tile. The base material around the room, and what this typically is referring to is kind of what we would call a base mold or a trim. Um, in this case, they're using a four inch vinyl because it's commercial uh, building. And then we have the finishes on the walls. Uh, these are the cardinal compass points I mentioned before, north, south, east, and west. They're painted gypsum board. In this case, that's what painted gyp BD refers to. And then we'll actually see some type of ceiling material and the height at which those, um, those ceiling materials are expected to be, for example, in a, in a drop ceiling, ceiling tile situation. And then in the next slide, uh, I'm showing an example of a door schedule. These are expanded from the previous slides that I showed you. Um, but you can start to see uh, where the door, what the door number would be along the, the, the first column on the left, and then identifying the space where uh, they, they are to be placed, uh, the size of it, of the door itself, um, the framing material or the size of the framing material or the finish on the framing material, information like that. All of these get placed into one table so that you have a reference as a builder uh, for all the places where a door number might be designated in the building. Now I want to talk a little bit about the phases of architectural drawings. We're going to get into this in much more detail, especially as we talk about the phases of estimating. But here we're introducing the idea that drawings go through phases, they build upon themselves, and these phases increasingly uh, have more and more detail and communicate more and more detail so that the contractor can understand exactly what needs to be built, the client understands exactly what to expect, and the uh, contract between the client and the contractor can be detailed as well. Uh, we start off typically in a conceptual phase uh, of architectural drawings it, that can be back of a napkin it's based on units or modules for example the number of hotel rooms uh, that your client is thinking about placing into this building and you can start get an, getting an idea of the cost per unit in that case uh, there's very little detail in a conceptual uh, drawing and um, there's very little level of accuracy then we have what's called a schematic drawing set uh, we're getting to about 30% level of accuracy with our detail. Um, we can start putting some more numbers to it, but there aren't a lot of details or dimensions. We're just adding structural materials and sizing of the space to that original conceptual idea. 
but we can start to use um, different estimating techniques to get information around the cost of the schematics. Once we move from schematic to design development drawing level, uh, we're about 60% complete with the drawings. We're adding a lot uh, more details and dimensions to the materials and the sizing of, space, of spaces. We're really developing that design and this is the largest change typically in the accuracy along the process that we'll have and the point at which we can really start putting some good uh, cost figures to the drawings. Then we move towards working drawings, 85% complete drawings typically. Um, these are appropriate for bidding uh, and they have correct dimensions and relationships of parts typically, uh, but they can often change and we deal with that through an RFP or an RFI process uh, request for uh, information is what the contractor would give to uh, the uh, architect to ask for more information. An RFP is a request for a proposal. That's what the architect and the client might uh, issue to try to get uh, costs and uh, bids for the, for the project. Finally, when we get to about 95% complete drawings, we have what we call construction drawings. They're appropriate for bidding and building the project and they often include specifications, code compliance documents, uh, any kind of RFI information that was answered in the previous working drawing uh, step and addenda to their previous drawings so that if there was an RFP sent out before, now we can know what uh, items changed uh, with the new addenda. In the next slide I'm showing an example of a construction drawing and the level of detail that you would have at this stage. Often we don't see drawings that are taken to this stage, but it is a very high level of detail. In this case, we're seeing uh, an expansion joint at a firewall um, where you have a roofing membrane coming in and you basically have two, building, two parts of the building um, that have an expansion joint between them with lots of notes, lots of critical information, uh, and it's very easy to be able to put a, um, a, a quantity and understand the quality of work and to be able to put a, a cost to this when you're bidding on the drawings. All right, so now that we've gone through the different types of drawings and the phases of drawings from low level of detail to high level of detail where we can actually bid on the drawings and it's, a, it's easier for us to understand exactly what's going into the building and how to get very close levels of accuracy when it comes to bidding. Uh, it's important to talk about kind of what are the basic building blocks of a building project and this will uh, lead into the next lecture which is on specifications of a building. Typically a building project is comprised of the substructure, so the foundation systems, plus the superstructure the building itself, which includes structural systems, materials, and all building services like mechanical, electrical, plumbing. We also call that MEP. It is comprised of the utilities and the site modifications. That might be in a rehab, actually taking an existing structure and working with it. Or it might just be that you have a clear lot and you are modifying uh, utilities and other elements on the site. For any building project, especially in commercial building, uh, we have a typical uh, set of sheet numbers and drawings uh, that we will see. The A series refers to the architectural drawings, the S series, the structural, C is for civil, L is for landscape, P, plumbing, M, mechanical drawings, E for electrical drawings. So for example, sheet A 1.2 is sheet number 1.2 within the architectural drawings and that might have a floor plan where 1.3 is the floor plan for the third floor 1.2 is the floor plan for the second floor um, these are not the only sheet numbers and drawing types uh, sometimes you'll get a set of drawings especially for a an industrial type of building or a laboratory building that has other series but these are some of the typical ones that you'll see in every um, set of plans. And typically you will see different types of notes on each one of those sheet numbers or types of drawings that we mentioned in, in the previous slide. Types of notes on drawings often you'll have general conditions. They convey information that is common to either the sheet, the discipline, or, or the division of work, or the project. 
Um, you'll have demolition notes sometimes on a rehab project, removal of different items like trees and structure. Um, you'll have construction or plan notes. So sometimes uh, the plans will call out certain materials. They'll have a note that says this is a specific type of material uh, or that you need to use a specific method of assembly, quality, or design that the architect intends for that uh, area of the plan. Sometimes we'll have notes on the detail drawings, uh, referring back to the drawings that were detail sections before that we showed in this lecture. Uh, you saw a lot of notes, uh, very detailed and specific to the detail um, drawing itself, saying exactly what the architect expected uh, and the designer expected. Sometimes you'll see landscape notes and sometimes you'll see revisions or addendums. These are clouded typically. You'll see these clouded uh, shapes, kind of uh, elliptical or uh, round shapes on the plans. They typically show that this is new information. It was not in the original version of the drawings or the last version of the drawings uh, that you saw. And you need to pay attention to those because it indicates that things have changed on the drawings. Here's an example of a cover sheet on drawings. In this case, it's Virginia Tech's Integrated Life Sciences building that I'm showing you. Uh, it has all kinds of information, and you really need to spend some time looking at the cover sheet so you can understand uh, issues of navigation for the drawings. Make sure you can see site details. You can see the name of the owner, project name, um, uh, vicinity or location map of the project site within local monuments or landmarks. Um, uh, sometimes you'll see a rendering on, on the front of it, but typically you'll see indexes of the drawings within the set of drawings, so you can see all the different drawings. You might see what the latest version of the project would be. You'll see the seal of the design professional. Sometimes you'll see the name of the firm that is building uh, the project, or you'll see that it's a design-build firm, or you'll see that it's a uh, consultant that's helping uh, with a construction management at risk, for example, on, on behalf of the client. All really important things to look at. Um, also, you can see on this Integrated Life Sciences building cover sheet, there's a bunch of symbols that are important for this project that they're delineating here. That It's important to go through and, and abbreviations all the way to the left side. That's what that first column is of um, different abbreviations they're going to use on the drawings and the full description of that abbreviation. Finally, I, I want to introduce an important concept uh, for the future of drawings, and that is LOD, or level of detail. As the buildings are becoming more and more digital, um, the drawings and models that represent the buildings are becoming more and more important. So we have multiple levels of detail from LOD 100 all the way up to LOD 500. Uh, you'll, you will see this more and more in, in your education here at Virginia Tech and out in the industry, but level of detail 100 is often what uh, we use to just mass uh, a building to do element massing and determining areas and volumes and heights, things like that. Uh, once we get to LOD 200, we're actually getting into uh, building system criteria, certain sizes of the different parts and the shapes and the locations, orientation of the building on the site, quantities, uh, and often LOD 200 is where architecture firms will leave the model. They don't really build the model, the uh, digital model, beyond that level. But as contractors, uh, we're seeing more and more that uh, in the field, you need a better level of detail, and the contractors will build into their price and have a BIM department that takes the model and rebuilds it to a higher level of detail. On the next slide we see the uh, criteria for level of detail 300 and 400, but basically what's happening is as you get closer to 400 you're getting into really good levels of detail uh, to the point where prefabrication of certain systems uh, can be done uh, through uh, the model itself. So for example ducting and ductwork for the building the mechanical contractors can often take a level of detail 400 building information model, use it in their factory or in their manufacturing plant, and build the ductwork before they even get out on site. Save a lot of time, save a lot of cost. Moving on to the next slide, then we also have what we would call level of detail 500, where 
we actually verify in the field all these as-built dimensions. We know exactly what the size and the detail of each part of the building is down to the uh, reinforcing steel in the footings and in some cases the uh, actual tie wires on the reinforcing steel. We're getting to a high level of detail where the building could almost be printed as is. When you get to the AV500 as-built model level of detail, uh, you have the ability to manage the process of construction through uh, software like BIM 360 that's on an iPad where the model itself and the iPad and the camera and the iPad are speaking to each other and they're able to identify, recognize certain parts of the building, catalog it, change that level of detail and information, and help build the building to a greater level of detail, um, better control of quantities, better control of quality, all the different aspects of the building. And, and this is where the industry is going, and that's why I wanted to introduce it here. This concludes the Reading Plans Lecture. Uh, for the Fundamentals of Construction Management course. Now that you've finished this module, you can define orthographic projection and drawing types, identify common orthographic projection drawing types, define the phases of architectural drawing processes, define the parts of a building, identify specific sections of architectural drawings, and identify types of notations on architectural drawings.